Secretary General of the National Revolutionary Movement of Liberia, Naruma, and with the power he was vested by the People's Bureau of Narimbo, the Press Bureau, and of course the National Chairperson, or called the Major General Brother Leader Siafakane. Today we are pleased in our capacity as head of the Secretary of the National Movement of Liberia to welcome members of venerable media institution to this historic. Amanda! 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 Welcome members of Venerable Media Institution to this historic event as we launch the endless revolution today for the emancipation of our ordinary struggling Liberians. Today, Narimbo speaks to the nation and by extension the world on training contemporary issues that are confronting Liberia, including global perspectives, including in fact, issues are, you know, that, that are facing our society, ranging from rape, sexual-based violence, the mass looting of the state with passion by the WLA establishment, the dissolution of the opposition, thereby dashing the hopes of the already prepared Liberian people to make president. We are a one-term president, comes 2023. And of course, the impartiality, in faithfully discharging the functional and duties of civil society institutions and religious institutions, including youth and student communities, have been pocketed by the ruthless and rural led government. So, on this note, we urge you, members of the media landscape of Liberia, to remain professional in subscribing to the ethics and profession of media. Amanda! 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 Aluta! Continua! We, we, we caution you, members of the media institution, to reduce your expectation as we go through the historic press conference that marks the launch of the National Revolutionary Movement of Liberia. So, so when you come here with your impregnated CDC mind or ANC or whatsoever, there's a need to reduce your expectation because we will not speak your feelings here. We are concerned about building the minds of the ordinary struggle Liberians and of course, redeeming our country. So on this note, we will turn over to Comrade Adelog, Cadre Brother Leader Mustafa, who is the chairperson of the Press and Propaganda Bureau or the official spokesperson of the movement who gave a very snapshot of the story city of the movement. Thanks so kindly. Manda! 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 Yo! 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 Thank you very much, Congress Secretary General of the National Revolutionary Movement of Liberia. And let me extend in my you know, compromises and convince the revolutionary Britons to commandos and commandants who have gathered here today. So, and let me also extend my appreciation to media men who have also assembled here to ensure that the voice of the revolutionaries are taken to the people. So, Congress, yeah. thank you very much for the assembly. As the introduction be made, my name is Mustafa Dukle, and commonly refers to as Mwanimu Julius Kambaragi Nyerere, the great liberators of the peoples of the East. The National Revolutionary Movement of Liberia in South Narimu, it is a U-based political revolutionary movement that is dedicated to agitate and advocate one behind of the ordinary suppressed and oppressed masses of our country. It is on the background of injustices that continue to be perpetrated against our people. Lies mind enlightened revolutionary have gathered to form this movement. And we are pleased to come here today to, to publicize to you all the manifesto and the agenda of this movement. As you can briefly listen to me so that I can go through the doctrine that has been prepared. 
by the revolutionary movements under the leadership of former military cadre, a commandant, a all-time guerrilla fighter from the east, a man that can be compared to a symbol for Bolivar, Comrade Militant Adiel of Cardinal Steve Walsh, Siafa, Kane, Kane, Siafa, the chairman of the Great National Revolutionary Movement on Liberia. So, 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 briefly, we go to our aims and objectives of the movement. Number one, the aim and objectives of this movement is to bring together people's of like minds for the foul minds of the state. Two, to demand necessary reforms in the governance systems of, of our country. Number three, to serve as a medium through which the voice of ordinary citizens in our society can be heard. Number four, to continually prepare and propagate the gospels of good governance and embodiments of economic freedom, social justice, social equalities, and the rule of law. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. So at this juncture, we turn to Brother Leader, Major General Siafak Kane to speak to you on national training issue confronting our libraries inside the fence so kind. Thank you very much, Comrade Conspicuous Dynamic Secretary General of the National Revolutionary Movement of Liberia. South. National Revolutionary Movement of Liberia. South. Press statement for immediate release, March 15, 2022. The National Revolutionary Movement of Liberia condemns the government for abandoning the ordinary citizens from only opposition political parties for prolonged silence and cautions civil society organizations and religious communities to impartially discharge their respective functions. Ideological men, women of the press, thank you for positively responding to our call. Why it is very terrible that the tendency of truth telling has its nature to be spun in the direction of yellow journalism, we are conspicuously certain that no matter how some media partitioners may fight in twisting the truth into an unethical lie, the forces of who shall triumph over the spirit of malevolence. Distinguished members of the press, during the past immediate month of this 2022 year, the Bureaus commemorated the past centennial event, even though its actuality destroyed the significant and quintessential went and because in the minds of the semi-conscious attendants who thought it was a political party campaign launch due to the form and manner in which the program was presented by the CDC government. America! Wait, in America! essence, Wait, in America! essence, in essence, the accidental historical gay crash of hysterity prepared men short days they misconstrued and tasteless to the significance of the Elizabeth voyage. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, predicated upon this, Narimo is calling on the We Are Lair administration to clearly distinguish between political party rallies and historical national events set aside to be celebrated by Liberians. Since the election of the CDC Lair administration, the authentic intent of national events like the Independent Day National Flag Day and the recent bicentennial celebration, respectively, have been misconstrued and have turned to a ruling party political rallies. Narimo wants to use this medium to enlighten us of we are that the national events are not meant for the chanting of ruling party slogans, rather intended for the unification of Liberians regardless of status, travel, political and religious affiliation, for the national peace bearing process of the country. The distinguished revolutionary ideologues, fellow Liberians, the Central Revolutionary Council of Narimo calls on the Ministry of Justice to release the listing of the 500 prisoners given executive clemency by Mr. So we are in line with Article 59 so, of the 1986 Constitution. So, so, President, we are granted executive clemency to 500 inmates serving in our present terms. It is prudent for the Ministry of Justice to release the lesson of those released 
for jail. Far a publication in famously rare newspapers in Liberia and sell documents to contain cardinal information like the various prison terms and crimes committed by those images. The pronouncement made by the president's office has triggered many public perceptions, most especially as we get towards the most crucial 2023 general electoral process. There is an unconfirmed information that those emails are hardcore criminals, as combatant and contracted chaos, meant to form a death squad to aid the Sabu and Zebra units and the crew defense force organized by certified executive general power of the NSA and, re and recognized by the government of Liberia to instill fear in the voting population so as to scare them away from turning out in their numbers to exercise their democratic franchise in 2023. Narimo is calling on the Ministry of Justice to release the official information bearing the names of the emails released, category of crimes committed to put the power striking population of Liberia in better position to understand the actual intent of the full body president's security wars. If the action of the president is done with sincerity, then it will even help to protect those released from more justice in the various communities. And those they even committed crimes against. But if the motive of the president is sinister, as allegedly stated above, then Narumo will rally the poor citizens for their own protection unrepentantly, since we are to be our own security as asserted by the president years ago. Amanda! Wait! Amanda! Wait! Now we move France on the failure of the we are left government in the fight against drugs, sexual based violence, rape or justifiable killings of Liberians. It is it is unfortunate on the part of the CDC government to have fuel or instituted policy measures to control the usage of narcotics and substances that are creating serious trauma for the population, many young people who could serve as a perfect possible and direct replacement for, the, for our current world leaders. If they are incapacitated tomorrow from some fast running conducted by our intelligent view, the little over four years of Mr. We are leadership has produced not only more Zogos and more ghettos than the 12 years leadership of my early Johnny Selly, but also highest number of rape cases without good outcome, sexual harassment at job site, general based violence on precedented disappearance of Liberian citizens, ritualistic killing and extraction of human past, matchless looting of the Liberian state, poor international co connection among others. Disgusting it. The government does not see the proliferation of drugs as a national security threat. Officials of government are seen in ghettos supporting drugs addition for selfish political quest. While eating remains one of the greater achievements for 90% of the Liberian citizens. In the minds of those officials of government, the more young people are addicted to drugs, the more government stands a better chance for re-elections because those young people will lack the conscious thought of decision making during elections. Members of the folk estates will take this time to agreement on the Liberal Council of Churches, the Liberal National Muslim Council, and civil society groupings for their silence on issues of national concern. These various institutions are funded to play a balanced role in society, but on the contrary, with all these non seated contemporary ills and discrepancies in our society, ranging from rape, massive corruption, secret killings of citizens, students, and others, drugs abuse and judicial manipulation for selfish political gain, the Council of Churches, Liberal National Muslim Council, and civil society groupings have abandoned their roles, siding with politicians and political institutions. They are only seen nowadays doing political rallies endorsing candidates during election period. 
with the December 8, May 10, 2021, May 10 senatorial elections being one of the classical examples. Their actions and inactions contravene the true essence of their actual existence, and they should desist from such attitude, known later than now. Considering the respected principles on which these institutions were established, we are cognitively developed about the fact that if there are dispute, dispute religious and civil society institutions should be in better positions void of partiality, prejudice, and bias to find remedy. Narimo wants to use this means to call on leaders of the opposition political parties in Liberia to openly apologize to their supporters and thousands of struggling Liberians who saw hope in the collaborating political party CPP as an authority for Liberian trans trans transformation comes 2023 for the form and manner in which they have conducted themselves over the past month. The actions of the CPP of recent did not only dash the hopes of the hopeless, struggling librarians who are eager to change the we are their administration, but also highly frustrated many librarians who were adequately prepared to team up with the CPP to make this envision change collectively in 2023. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, in amazed of the CDC government inability to prescribe a vibrant governing policy in adhering to the rule of law and general economic growth, the collaborating political party, CPB, was seen by many Liberians as a viable political substitute to make we are a one-term president. We possibly, at the detriment of many Liberians who hopes were being placed in the CPB, leaders of the CPB decided to put personal importance over national agenda. Fellow citizens within the media landscape, it is saddening to acquaint you that the CPB dissolution was not on policy differences but individual quest for state power. Predicated upon this, it is logically important to apprise the oppositions that the role of opposing political parties in every democracy is to critique the ruling party on policy issues and present better workable solutions for the betterment of the state and her people and not to struggle for personal quests. Amazingly, the leaders of the CPB didn't see the lapses of the we are left government as an issue. They reduced the entire opposition to power struggle among themselves, leaving the hope of many librarians in the drainage. We strongly believe that in order, in order to have a competitive democratic process in 2023, we need a consolidated opposition. Therefore, there is a need for leaders of the opposition to view all other issues as normal politics and realign with prescribed policy. Helpful, now we will call on the CPB to put aside their personal greed and put the interests of the struggling librarians first. Fellow librarians and members of the press, the state is currently bleeding. Hope has been dashed as the opposition block is seriously fragmented. The regime has also abandoned our huge responsibilities in regard to the affairs of the state. Civil societies and religious institutions have gone in bed with political institutions. Evident by the anointing ceremonies of, ser of, of senatorial Amanda, candidates. Wait, Amanda! Wait! Amanda! Wait! wait, wait of senatorial candidates in the just ended December 8 senatorial elections, thereby losing their senses of neutrality as we approach the general elections. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, following the current integrity issues surrounding the National Election Commission's neck, we are calling for the appointment of a counterpart election commission comprised of representatives from the United Nations, the African Union, the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, to ensure the protection of the collective interests of Liberians in 2023. 
the counterpart commission should be the alternative since 2023 is a bridge between anarchy and peace. The counterpart commission will verify all actions of the National Election Commission to ensure that she remains neutral and the election process is free of policy interest or job protection. Fellow Liberians and friends from the media, members of the Revolutionary Bureau of Narimo, Narimo also noticed that public officials of government that should go through the process of confirmation by the Liberian Senate if appointed by the president as per the constitution have been acting in their respective positions for over a year, some over two years now, and we see this as bad governance practice by Mr. Weir with different motives. We are pleased to have you informed that Madam Elizabeth Duncan of the Good Governance Commission, Ruth Coca Collins, Minister of Public Works, the head of the airport authority, the deputy central bank governor for administration, Madam Numini Pearson, and others have been acting in their respective public positions over a year. There is not a sign of good public policy because it has a proclivity to compromise their independence. At the same time, in adhering to Article 72B of the 1986 Constitution of Liberia, we are calling on the Chief Justice Francis Poco to honorably retire as, as Chief Justice of the Republic of Liberia. It has been over a year since Justice Poco celebrated his 70 years birthday, the age which is a retirement benchmark prescribed by the Constitution. If the executive is still in search for his replacement, the office of the president needs to send a communication to the Senate to grant him the permission to continue. The role of the judiciary is to give the legal interpretation of the Constitution. Therefore, it is a breach of peace to see the highest body of law in violation of the same Constitution they seek to protect. Because of these reasons and many others, institutions like legends cannot be cautioned by officials of the legislative and judiciary branches of government for not conducting national population census for at least 12 years now, even though the Constitution says census should be conducted after every 10 years to inform government decision on policy making. Ladies and gentlemen of the press, so, it is prudent enough to remind the government that the issue of electricity plays a vital role to the, to the economic growth and security of the state as well. Though it is highly ins insufficient, it is highly insufficient due to lack of power supply to a majority of the 15 countries. We have witnessed for the past few months consistent power shortage in Moravia, the nation's capital and its environs. Narimo wants to use this medium to call on the national legislature to with immediate effect invite the management of the Liberian Electricity Corporation, LEC, for the key objective of providing explicit technical explanations on the causes of the power shortage and what can be done as a remedy to solving such security issues that engulf the country and her people currently amidst the unjustifiable killings and disappearance of Liberians daily. Moving forward, it is also highly disappointing to see our neighbor our neighboring countries like Sierra Leone, Africa Coast, Guinea, others making great progress daily in, se in sectors of their society, while abroad as a model of many African nations still struggling, still struggling with issues like common electricity. Sorry, this we are left government has been a lot of monies to inconsistent inconsequential functions like the Clara Marie Weir and Madame Ellie Johnny Selly Foundations from the taxes paid by the sea struggling librarians and, and bannering the cardinal places 
of investment like the African power plant that could create unlimited access to electricity for the country. The stingray members of the press and the Liberian people. Sincerely, it is grossly unfortunate that these foundations will be feeding on the national budget. No money, these foundations should be lobbying with international donors and humanitarian organizations in achieving their primary objective, which according to them is to help other Liberians. But this, disappointingly, they are robbing the same people in a donor. The National Revolutionary Movement of Labrador calls on the talking tone and multi colors former minister of the Republic of Labrador to unconditionally retract his irresponsible statement made of recent on LBS that Labrador should patiently wait on the rainy season to get electricity. Would be